<laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to this video of myself and Mr. Simon Bates. And we are in your wheelhouse, Simon. We're in <laughs> lively metal alto sax mouthpiece range. Yes, nasty, nasty mouthpieces. Nasty mouthpieces. <laughs> now, we actually did a video a couple of years ago looking at some nasty metal mouthpieces mm -hmm. on alto. I'll try and put it up in the links here, where we looked at the Woodstone metal and the Theowani Mindy Bear model yeah. metal. But there's three fairly new things uh, that are out in the market now, which we wanted to do in this video. We're going to look at the... Uh, David Sanborn model from Aaron Drake. We're going to look at the Jody Jazz Super Jet, and we're going to look at the new Theo Annie uh, Fire model. Now, price-wise, it's quite a big jump here from the Sanborn, which is around the six hundred pound. Oh. The Jody Jet's three fifty-ish, and the Theo Annie's two fifty-ish. Mm. And we'll talk about that, but we just want to do a fair bit of blowing in this video, so you guys can hear them. And then I'm going to throw to Simon and ask him what he thinks. Obviously. This is a certain style, a certain vibe, yeah, yeah. isn't it? So uh, of course, yeah. we're going to lean into that nastiness. And I've got just the man, <laughs> the nastiest man in showbiz. So let's have a listen to this sample, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about the model afterwards. OK. <laughs> Restrained of you near the end there, uh, Mr. Bates. Yeah, well, I just thought, you know, let's see if it can do things a bit more mellow. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it does. I mean, um, obviously, you know, this is the David Sanborn model, but it doesn't follow that I'm going to sound exactly like David Sanborn when I'm playing it because, Shucks. you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, most of the, oh, a lot of the sound is, is, is in here. But um, it, it's a beautiful feel in the mouth. Um, the, the beak is quite kind of um, shallow. So, you know, it does take a bit of getting used to, you know, your mouth is, is going to be a little more closed than a conventional mm. ebonite mouthpiece. Uh, but, um, you know, that's part and parcel of getting as much air in in the right uh, in the right way to, uh, you know, sort of uh, to, to get that really zingy sound. Mm. This is a bright mouthpiece, but to be honest, it's not quite as bright as I thought it was going to be. Mm. I don't think it's as bright as the Mindia Bear. No. You know, sort of looking back on that, you know, and that that was kind of like biting a piece of paper. That um, had a certain violence so, to it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, actually, I think it's worth pointing out. So Aaron Drake, American mouthpiece maker and, and excellent um, finisher of mouthpieces. He, uh, he and Sanborn actually met in 2013 and they started talking about uh, Aaron making something to replace uh, David's old mouthpiece, which he's used for, for many years. He wanted a modern piece that he could get more reliably into and, and start a new uh, life using that, as it were. Mm. And then about 18 months later, uh, they settled on this um, Sambor model for David Sambor to use, and he's been using that since 2014. Fast forward a few years after that, they decided to actually bring it to market as one they would sell. Before that, it was just for David Sambor to use. Now, David uses an eight. Simon, for the purpose of this video, we're using sevens across all of these, yep. just so we have a consistent factor. Um, but that's worth knowing that Mr. Sanborn uh, uses the eight. Uh, they are extremely beautifully well made, these, mm -hmm. I would say, handcrafted. So there is a hell of a lot of hand involvement on these, much more than on any of the other two. But that's why it's quite a lot of money. And as you said, I was maybe expecting a little more violence than we got from it. Yes. Now, that's yeah. not necessarily good or bad, but that was just a notice that we mm. felt... And you, when we jump to the super jet, maybe we'll have a conversation about how they compare in that. But yeah. from a blowing point of view, resistance-wise, how resistance does it Resistance-wise, it's good. You know, um, enough to it, blow against, but not. Yeah, I mean, you need to put quite a lot of air down these sort of mouthpieces anyway. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, you know, your breathing has to be good. You have to take in a good gulp of air, otherwise, it's uh, yeah, it's not going to not going to respond the way you want it to. But yeah. overall, um, you know. I'm not sure whether this mouthpiece would be for me, but it's a formidable piece. It really is a nice, you know, so it's beautifully made um, yeah. and very evenly blowing. Um, but yeah, it's, it, 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 
to say, you know, it's, it, there's, there's a real nice quality to it. Yes, it's not all bark. And no, bite. no, no, it's not. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, we just point out, it does come with this uh, fabric style ligature and also the Drake four point uh, plastic ligature, uh, or excuse me, hybrid resin material ligature, <laughs> uh, I believe I should say, uh, which uh, you can use either ligature on, but we just use this for ease today because it was to hand. All right, we're gonna now look at the Jody Jazz Superjet. Bit of a jump down in price, 350-ish pounds at the point of putting this video out. Let's have a listen to that and see how it compares. There we go, that's the super jet. And I would just say, sitting here, uh, yowzers. Sorry. That yeah. feels like it's got sort of an overdrive on it, even compared yeah, to yeah. a sandboard. Just power, I would say, is the first word that springs to mind. What, what's it like for you from a plane point of view? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd like to spend a bit more time with it if I could, because uh, I'm not sure whether this particular read is, is the perfect read for it. Um, not, Java 3 Van Doren, Yes, sorry, not, not, not sure whether the ligature that comes with it is the one for me as well, you know, so it, it's possibly something that, that I would mess about with a bit, but um, definitely for me, even though it's a step down in price, it's a step up f for playability for you, uh, reasons yeah. for me, mm. um, and, and the comfort as well, you know, that, the, the, the sandball wasn't uncomfortable, but this feels much more naturally in my mouth, okay. you know, yeah. And um, it, can it lay back a bit like we did on the sandboard? I, I expect it can. I, I mean, it, it's odd because I almost don't want to because <laughs> it does what it does so well. Yeah, but. yeah, it's coaxing you out. I guess it, you know, but it wants could, to be. It wants it wants to take air through it. Yeah, and it's yeah. got a good resistance as well. You know, um, some metal mouthpieces I've tried recently. You know, you you you, you need so much air to go through that basically it's it kind of like you know you're playing a minimum and then you need to breathe again. But <laughs> but this does have a really good resistance to it. So you know, it just feels like you can really crank it up and go it for goes. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, mm. we, we're using the seven, there's six, seven, eight, there's a couple of tip openings available, and it does come with the ligature assignment says, yes, you can, you may want to fiddle with other, maybe one screw fabrics, whatever your vibe is, um, but the ligature that comes with it does a, does a good job. Um, like all of these, it's quite, a, it's a very high baffle, and it looks mean when you get it out of the box, you kind of know with the direction it's heading in, obviously. Um, but I would say with the Jodies, um, not necessarily other than the at more than the other two here, but they are extremely consistent. We do find that in the manufacturing, in the yeah. finishing, both of the metal and of the of the hard rubber models as well. They're really, really well made. So a very reliable bet. And if you are wanting that dirty alto sound, if you're a soloist or you're doing kind of even smooth jazz kind of stuff to some degree as well, um, then then that would be a really good shout. Let's have a look now though at the Theowani Fire, which is a brand new model Theowani have brought out as part of their Elements range, which are more affordable. They're around the 250, 260 pounds mark. Put that into dollars if you're watching in the States. Um, and that is quite cheap for a Theowani metal, which mm. are normally up around yeah. the four, 500 pound <laughs> mark. So we'll jump onto that next and see what we think about it. There we go, everybody. That's the fire in a seven. Did it bring the fire? Well, it did, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's interesting because it, it seems to take more air. It seems to want more air to um, to get it going. Um, I was trying to sort of crack the note, you know, when you get that kind mm. of raspy thing, and it, it, it didn't quite go, um, where the other two were a little bit easier. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, hmm. It's an interesting mouthpiece. It, it, it 
it's got a great sound, um, but it's harder work than the other two, right. if I'm honest. I must admit, I, when I first took it out of the box, I looked at it and I thought the, the side rails were a little thick, a little thicker than what I would hope to see. Mm. Often on the metals, the thinner, the, the better in some ways. But actually, when I was sat, we were setting up and I heard it, I thought, wow, it sounded way better than I thought it was going to from the look of it. Now, right. I, sh yeah. I should have trusted Theo because he only makes good things, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, of course. Uh, but it didn't excite me when I looked at it. But when I heard it, I thought it sounds great. Mm. However, I wonder if that slight resistance needing that more air is down to that. I'm not sure. Um, but it's certainly sitting here. It, it, it fits the bill. It's metal. It's lively. It's vibrant. It's, it's... I wonder if it's got as much character perhaps as or yeah. range as the I, other I, two maybe it's a bit more one-dimensional i, I think know. it probably is yeah, yeah. i mean I, I was trying to do things on it that weren't quite coming out for me mm. you know um maybe again different setup different read um you know you're gonna have slightly different results i mean this is the read i've just taken off my my brill heart so yeah you know, it's probably not um, not ideal. I would fiddle around a bit more. Find the right thing, yeah. yeah. But I think if you were looking for the first metal mouthpiece and you wanted something more in that lively end of stuff and you were on a tighter budget, I would guess that one of these versus, say, a metal link or a metal mayor, this definitely, oh, uh, if you wanted yeah. something more vibrant, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. would wipe the floor with them. It would, yes. It? Yeah. You know. and, and, you know, that metal Yannicka sounds and things like that, you know, this is, yeah, get one of these rather than those. But yeah. If you can stretch up, I mean, you know, I, I, I'll make no no bones about it. My favourite of the three is the Jody. Okay, you know, so it's is, worth the extra hundred quid. For I you, would say for so, for, personally for me, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you know. but I mean, um, Theo makes some incredible mouthpieces. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever tried a Duff Theo one. You know, th these aren't Duff. No, no, <laughs> by, no, by any means. But it's just you know down to personal preference. You know, and maybe it didn't quite. Do what I what I wanted it to do. Maybe we're a bit unfair comparing it against things more expensive, but it's yeah. just nice to say if you're in the market for this kind of thing and you, this is the range across the point of prices, you can choose kind of where you sit price-wise. So all of them are available, obviously, from here, us here at Dorks in various tip openings. Seven is tends to be very popular on alto um, yeah. for, for metal pieces. Um, but and, and as a final thought, Simon. Trying metal pieces for the first time can be a little bit squeaky squawky. You feel a bit unsafe yeah, sometimes, don't you? No, you do. Yeah, it's... it can be. I mean, um, and you, I guess in a way you've got to have a sound in your head before you, you know, yes. before you do it. If you, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a metal mouthpiece to have a bright sound. You know, that's a yep. popular misconception. Metal might give you a bit more power though, um, but. You know, I, I mean, I use an Ebonite uh, jet on the eight, mm. uh, on, on eight tenor. on the tenor. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, at the moment, I'm using a, a, a 1930s Brill heart on the Alto. I'm so, working on him, but yeah, he's, he's, it's you know, it's tough to get him off that. Yeah. But uh, but I do have some Godalas and and various other sort of mouthpieces that I stick on every now and again. So you know, I'm always in the market for for new stuff. That's why he comes, everyone. He's, yes. he's, he's easy. He comes in, he buys mouthpieces. It's great. I keep inviting him back. There we go. Okay, yeah. well, hopefully that's helped. Um, you know, do go back and have a listen to them. And if you can get to try them, obviously, with dorks, we offer them on approval, so you can try a couple of them out at home, see how you get on, compare them back to back, and compare them with your own mouthpiece, etc. cetera. Um, but there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Do stay subscribed for all the latest videos. Simon, if you can send us out with something suitably filthy, that would be fantastic.